Hello, my name is Troy Atkins, and I am the founder and owner of Atkins Capital Management. I want to talk to you today about the key policy events that have transpired in the residential housing market for the quarter, to provide an assessment of the mortgage lending environment, and to provide an overview of the home price level for a select group of cities throughout the U.S. The purpose of this quarterly presentation is to bridge the gap in the residential housing market where deficiencies in education, public policy, regulation, product structure, and personnel have created an environment where prospective home buyers need objective information and useful analytical tools in order to help them make a prudent home purchase decision. This presentation was produced by Troy Atkins. I am the founder and owner of Atkins Capital Management. Atkins Capital Management is a privately owned and independently operated company. Our exclusive focus is on residential real estate. Our company is not affiliated with any parties associated with the residential housing industry. As a result, we provide objective information and useful analytical tools that help prospective home buyers make a prudent home purchase decision. For more information about my background, skills, and experience, please review the introduction section on the Atkins Capital Management website. Let me now turn your attention to the primary events that have transpired in the residential housing environment for the quarter. For the first quarter of 2017, an order imposed by the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau against the nation's three major credit reporting bureaus was the primary topic of discussion. The problem, according to the CFPB, was that TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian misled consumers by suggesting that the educational credit scores they offered were the same scores lenders used to make credit decisions. However, according to the CFPB, these scores were rarely used by lenders to make credit decisions. The order imposed by the CFPB levied the following fines upon these three organizations. Equifax and TransUnion were ordered to pay more than $23 million in fines and restitutions, and Experian was ordered to pay $3 million in terms of fines and restitutions for similar violations. According to Fair Isaac, 90% of top U.S. lenders use FICO scores as part of their lending decision-making process. Prospective homebuyers should remember that according to Fair Isaac, the three credit scores used by most lenders in terms of offering mortgage loans are FICO Score 5 by Equifax, FICO Score 2 by Experian, and FICO Score 4 by TransUnion. For the first quarter of 2017, a report titled Emerging Trends in Real Estate was worthy of discussion. The report, undertaken jointly by PricewaterhouseCoopers and the Urban Land Institute, provides an outlook on real estate investment and development trends, real estate finance and capital markets, property sectors, metropolitan areas, and other real estate issues throughout the United States. The following points are an excerpt of the key findings that can be used to help prospective home buyers analyze the real estate market in their community before deciding to purchase a home. First, a rising number of female executives, affluent immigrants, younger and older workers, and retirees will have a profound influence on community building in the U.S. over the next 10 years. Second, the annual change in the median existing home price versus the change in the median existing household income is outlined in an informative manner. Third, moderate and severe housing cost burden on households with annual income below $50,000 is worthy of analysis. Fourth, few builders are targeting middle income buyers. Instead, home builders have been targeting more affluent buyers. This in turn means that existing housing stock will likely exceed the supply of new homes for future middle-income buyers. And fifth, 
The National Association of Realtors is worried about the decreasing ability of Americans to buy homes. According to the NAR, it seems unlikely that the U.S. home ownership rate will edge above 65% anytime soon. For the first quarter of this year, financial settlements agreed to by two foreign banking institutions that led to the U.S. mortgage crisis were also important topics of discussion. The Department of Justice reached a $7.2 billion settlement with Deutsche Bank, a German global banking and financial services institution headquartered in Frankfurt, in connection with the bank's issuance and underwriting of residential mortgage-backed securities between 2005 and 2007. In addition, the Justice Department reached a $5.28 billion settlement with Credit Suisse, a Swiss multinational financial services holding company located in Zurich, in connection with the bank's packaging, securitization, issuance, marketing, and sale of residential mortgage-backed securities between 2005 and 2007. These financial settlements should remind prospective home buyers that they need to take a proactive approach to analyzing their home purchase decisions by using independent proprietary software applications such as the Atkins Residential Home Valuation Analyzer. Moving away from these issues and to an assessment of the mortgage lending environment, it is important to note that for the first quarter of 2017, the national average mortgage loan interest rate for a 30-year fully amortized fixed rate mortgage loan began the quarter at 4.09% and ended the quarter at 4.19%. Since June of 2011, the national average mortgage loan interest rate for a 30-year fixed rate mortgage loan has been less than 4.61%. In order to better assess the current mortgage loan interest rate environment, prospective homebuyers should remember that the national average mortgage loan interest rate for a 30-year fully amortized fixed rate mortgage loan reached an all-time low of 3.31%, in November of 2012, and it reached an all-time high of 18.63% in October of 1981. In view of realized and expected labor market conditions and inflation, the Federal Reserve elected to raise the target federal funds rate from a range of 50 to 75 basis points to a range of 75 basis points and 100 basis points during their Q1 2017 Federal Open Market Committee meeting. In addition, the Fed stated that it aims to raise interest rates twice more by the end of the year. Accordingly, the Fed's stance of monetary policy remains accommodative, thereby supporting some further strengthening in labor market conditions and a return to 2% inflation. Prospective homebuyers should closely follow the level of mortgage loan interest rates in their community because a rising cost of debt will increase the amount of interest expense that prospective homebuyers will need to pay for their mortgage loan. This in turn will place downward pressure on the price level of residential housing in their community. Prospective homebuyers should use the Atkins Residential Home Valuation Analyzer in order to assess the impact of a changing interest rate environment. By using our software application, prospective home buyers will be able to make a prudent home purchase decision. Now that I have provided an overview of the events that have taken place in the residential housing environment for the quarter, let me turn your attention to the proprietary financial methodology and cloud-based analytical tool that can be used to provide an assessment of the price level of homes in a community. The Atkins Residential Home Valuation Analyzer is an internet-based software application that analyzes the relationship between the median home price level for a city and the median household income level for the city. With this information, the software application takes into account the most recent month-ending national average mortgage loan interest rate for a 30-year fully amortized fixed-rate mortgage loan and the assumption that no more than 28% of pre-tax household income should be spent by homeowners 
in order to repay the principal and interest costs for their mortgage loan. By utilizing this information, the Atkins Residential Home Valuation Analyzer can accurately assess the price level of homes in a city. From the first analytical perspective, the Atkins Residential Home Valuation Analyzer determines the level of underpricing or overpricing of homes in a city by calculating the mortgage loan interest rate that justifies the price level of homes in the city. With this information, the justified mortgage loan interest rate is compared against the national average mortgage loan interest rate in order to accurately assess the level of underpricing or overpricing of homes in a city. From the second analytical perspective, the Atkins Residential Home Valuation Analyzer calculates the percentage of household income that would have to be spent by the people that live in a city in order to justify the price level of homes in the city. With this information, the justified percentage of household income amount is compared against the traditionally accepted household income amount of 28% in order to accurately assess the level of underpricing or overpricing of homes in the city. By utilizing the Atkins Residential Home Valuation Analyzer, Prospective home buyers can determine the level of underpricing or overpricing of homes in a community in order to assist them in making a prudent home purchase decision. For more information about our finance-based analytical methodology and the Atkins Residential Home Valuation Analyzer, please watch our Review of Residential Real Estate Analysis Valuation Methodologies movie presentation and our Residential Real Estate Analysis Software Application movie presentation. Both of these presentations can be found on the Atkins Capital Management website. Now that I have provided an overview of how the Atkins Residential Home Valuation Analyzer is utilized, let me provide an overview of the home price level for a select group of cities across the U.S. For the first quarter of 2017, 16 cities that make up the Atkins 60 City Home Price Index were classified as overpriced for the quarter. San Francisco, New York City, San Diego, Seattle, and Los Angeles were identified as the five most overpriced cities in the index. In terms of a relative price level analysis, it is not possible to justify the home price level for the top five overpriced cities by reducing the 30-year fixed rate mortgage loan interest rate from 4.19% to 0%. Therefore, in order to classify the homes in the top five overpriced cities as underpriced, it would need to be deemed prudent by prospective home buyers to spend more than the justified percentage of household income amounts. As an alternative, in order to justify the median home price level for each city, the median required household income level would need to increase to a level within the respective range of $95,253 and $231,375. Finally, based on the median household income level, the quarter ending national average mortgage loan interest rate, and the assumption that no more than 28% of pre-tax household income should be spent in order to repay the principal and interest costs of a mortgage loan, the justified home price level for the top five overpriced cities fell within the respective range of $267,146 and $401,568. On the other side of the spectrum, 44 cities that make up the Atkins 60 City Home Price Index were classified as underpriced for the first quarter of this year. Buffalo, Detroit, Milwaukee, Memphis, and Huntington were identified as the five most underpriced cities in the index. While Huntington has the same justified percentage of household income amount as Memphis, Huntington is ranked as the fifth most underpriced city in the index due to its lower justified mortgage loan interest rate amount. While Huntington has the same justified percentage of household income amount as Wichita, Huntington is ranked as the fifth most underpriced city in the index due to its higher justified mortgage loan interest rate amount. In order to classify homes in the top five underpriced cities as overpriced, 
the national average mortgage loan interest rate would have to increase from 4.19% to more than the justified mortgage loan interest rate amount for each city, or it would have to be deemed imprudent by prospective homebuyers to spend as much as the justified percentage of household income amount in order to repay the cost of a mortgage loan. Prospective homebuyers should use the Atkins Residential Home Valuation Analyzer in order to accurately assess the level of overpricing or underpricing of homes in their community. Given the events that have transpired in the residential housing market and taking into account the fact that buying a home will likely be the largest single financial transaction that prospective homebuyers will ever make and the bulk of their net worth will likely be tied up in their home, Prospective homebuyers should use the Atkins Residential Home Valuation Analyzer in order to analyze residential real estate from five financial perspectives. By assessing residential real estate in this manner, prospective homebuyers will be able to make a prudent home purchase decision. For more information about the Atkins 60 City Home Price Index, to watch our catalog of residential housing movie presentations, and to subscribe to use the Atkins Residential Home Valuation Analyzer, please visit the Atkins Capital Management website at residentialrealestateanalysis.com. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this presentation.